Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. We are doing our MTG keywords. We're going to do a full week of this. So, yeah, today is Magecraft we're looking at first. What is Magecraft? So, this is an ability word that uh, was released in Strixhaven School of Mages. Any similarity to any other School of Mages is completely coincidental and uh, not a copyright infringement, obviously. Um, this is a flexible keyword that can offer a wide array of effects. So this is actually really nice. It is something where every time, it, how it works is you cast an instant or a sorcery, or if you copy it, this will trigger. That's very, very flexible. Um, this can go up very easily, and you don't need a deck that's really focused on like spell slinging to make this worthwhile. A lot of the effects, even if you get them like once in a while, are still worth having in your deck, I think. So yeah. Another thing to point out is that this keyboard has no major affiliations with any color, meaning it can, can be used in pretty much any deck. I think when you th talk about spells like instants and sorceries being used, you probably think like something to do, like is it or Grixis, that's going to be a spell slinger. You really do not need that with this. And I think this deck, uh, this deck, this um, list shows that well. Sound familiar? So this is similar to, or sorry, this mechanic is similar to prowess. It activates on casting of an instant or sorcery. It is different though because prowess does not activate if something is copied, right? If you copy an instant or sorcery, that doesn't trigger prowess. Also, magecraft can have pretty much any effect. Prowess always gives plus one plus one to the affected target until end of turn. Yeah, so. It's a very regimented ability, whereas Magecraft is very open-ended. So yeah, um, but yeah, if you have prowess, using Magecraft in the deck as well is probably still a very good idea. It's a great combination. Please hit like and subscribe. It really makes a big difference. Um, getting some more uh, subscribers this these days which is uh, big it it's it encourages me a lot and I appreciate it so thank you honorable mentions okay storm kiln artist I think this is the one that everyone thinks of so we're I've only not included this in the top five because or my five list because it is such a like I think everyone sees it coming anyway so for 102. He's a 3 3 for 3 in a red. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, create a treasure token. Just pick a whole bunch of treasure. Oh, it's a good idea. And Quandrix Apprentice, a green and a blue for a 3. No, sorry, a 2 2. I can't see even with my sunglasses on. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, sorcery spell, look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal, reveal a land card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So you're just going to keep making sure you hit those land drops. This is one of the ones where I think this is maybe not something you have to put into a deck that's like a spell slinger. But if you're always just looking at three cards, hopefully one of the three cards should be a land in just about any deck. So yeah. You're just always hitting those land drops that even in a Simic deck, you probably got lots of ramp, you got lots of ways to get extra land in. Remember, you're not ramping if you don't hit your land drop. If you don't hit your land drop, you're just paying mana for land drop. Anyway. Uh, Zaphi, Thunderous Conductor for 2 red blue. So this is very is it for a 1-4. And Magecraft, whenever you cast a copy in this or source, spell scry 1. So scry 1, if that spell is a mana value is 5 or higher or greater, create a 4-4 four, four blue and red elemental creature token. If that spell's mana is 10 or greater, he deals 10 damage to an opponent chosen at random. The random part is kind of the downside there. But 10 damage for casting a spell that with a 10 very very high in the instant sorcery with 10 you've got like apex of power and things like that so they're out there but yeah kind of have to build the deck around that whole idea if you're going to do that and with 31 cents number five okay 
Professor Onyx. All right, so uh, for Black Black for this uh, Planeswalker, it's Liliana. It's Liliana in a little, uh, she's in disguise. She's in a teacher's outfit, which I think is, anyway, I'm not gonna say that. Anyway, yeah, so, um, she has Magecraft. Whenever you cast a copy and insert a sorcery spell, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. That's pretty solid. Two life every time is going to really add up. Especially, I, I would put this in like a Grixis kind of Spellslinger deck. After saying you don't need Spellslinger for like this to met count. You don't need it for it to count to really get the most out of it. This is one that is probably a Spellslinger one. But it's very Grixis as well. What a plus one, you lose one life. Uh, look at the top three cards, put one of them in your hand, and the rest in your graveyard. Kind of a surveil of type effect. Minus three. Um, each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power among creatures that they control. Oh boy. Oh boy. That's mean. And minus eight. Each opponent may discard a card. If they don't, they lose three life. Repeat this process five, oh sorry, six more times. So basically seven times you say, okay, discard or lose three life. And uh, even if they have seven cards, they have zero cards in hand. And if they don't have seven cards, they take, they lose the cards, probably take damage as well. Or if they've got like two cards and don't want to give them up, they just take, uh, what is that? But yeah, seven times 21 damage. Oh my, 94 cents, or sorry, 97 cents. I, I was thinking four, I don't know why. Number four, I guess maybe that's why. Sedgemore Witch, for two and a black. It's a three, two with menace. Not bad. Ward pay three life. Eh, okay, sure. That's like a ward. If you're gonna have a ward, pay three life is like the most underwhelming ward, but anyway. Magecraft, when you cast your copy and insert a sorcery spell, create a 1-1 one, one black and green past creature token. With this creature dies, you gain one life. So you gotta start making these tokens, and every time one of them dies, you gain a life. Very, very useful. Again, this is like a Golgari thing, so green, black. You've got a lot of life gain shenanigans you can do with that. And this is gonna gain you some life. So it's a great way, especially if there's a board wipe or something, it's going to be like, oh, you get all your life gain triggers. It'll make people very hesitant to play those board wipes. Uh, 46 cents. Number three. Leonin Lightscribe. For one and a white is a 2-2. Two, two, and uh, whenever you cast a copy and insert a spell, creatures, creatures, all creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Your like Jeskai decks that are like casting a lot of non-creature spells, especially instant or sorceries, of course. Um, you're just gonna make those token decks are gonna get huge. Twenty-seven cents. Number two. Okay, so Extus Orik Overlord. This is a double-sided card, so you can choose, which I always like to anyway. One white, black, black for double strike two four. Eh. Whenever you cast or copy an in-store sorcery spell, return target non-legendary creature from your graveyard to your hand. So just automatic recursion. You don't need to trigger this a whole bunch of times to get the value out of it. Really, if you get like two uses out of it, I'd say it's worth it already, you know? This is just a bonus to like casting. But let's take a look. The other side, here if you can sacrifice this is six black red. So again, all together is a Mardu card, which I always like to see. But with this, yeah, if you could sacrifice a creature, it's two less to cast. So ideally you have like three things you either want to sacrifice or three tokens that you don't mind sacrificing. And yeah, it forces each opponent to sacrifice a creature and you make a three, six black and red avatar creature token. And whenever this creature attacks, it deals three damage to each opponent. Each opponent takes three damage every time that attacks. And hopefully you can populate and make copies of that token, right? And then have those tokens attack, and then even if there's two of them, six damage to each opponent. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 42 cents. 
Number one. This one's crazy. Add the Oracle of uh, Arcavius. Arcavius. I six blue blue. Crazy high cash and cost CMC Ace, right? Discard a card. You can return this to your hand. Anytime you want to save this, you could just like bounce it to your hand automatically, no problem. You do want a way to cheat this in, is the main thing, which Simic is good at. So whenever you cast a copy in its source source spell, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a non-land card, you may cast it by paying one. Any non-land? Pay one. You cast it. Um, yeah. If it's a land, put it onto the battlefield. You can just put any land straight into the battlefield. It's like ramp automatically, or if it's not a if it's not a land, you can just cast it for one. Um, remember, this activates every time you can cast an instant as well. So you can cast an instant during someone else's turn, either ramp or just play some crazy spell. This lets you play anything as well, including creatures, things you normally couldn't play without. Um, without a uh, flash, it doesn't care. Unless you do it anyway and cast it for one. Uh, I have to get this and put this into at least one deck for sure. Um, if you got some way to cheat, uh, to cheat creatures into play, get this. Uh, this is crazy. Anyway, 52 cents. Alright, this is also, if you. For two blue, blue, or sorry, two green, green. It'll let you just put however many card lands you have in your hand directly into play. So yeah. Oh sorry, yeah. Then if you control eight or more lands, you can uh, discard a card and put this back into your hand rather than discarding it. So you can potentially just like cast this, put a whole bunch of lands into the battlefield. Discard one card, put this back into your hand, and cast it as a creature. But yeah, oh my gosh. For 52 cents, that is just crazy. Okay, a list. Professor Onyx is 97 cents. Sedge War Witch is 46 cents. Leonin Light Scribe is 27 cents. Exodus Orik Overlord is 42 cents. Nazi Oracle of uh, Arcavius. Arcavius? Ah, no idea. Anyway, 52 cents. Anyway, take it easy.